What's up, y'all? It's your boy Zay, and welcome back to the Locked In Podcast. Hey, for those who don't know what the Locked In Podcast is, I got you, bro. We like on episode 10, and you still don't know? It's, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. The Locked In Podcast is nothing more than just locking in with Christ so he can lock the new you. Shout out to Editor Zay, because Editor Zay, he, he's doing a great, you're doing a great job. A very great job. I just want to tell you that. I know I'm you, but I just want to tell you that. All right. <laughs> but it's all about locking in with God. It is a Christian's POV. And in this podcast, you guys will learn purpose. You guys will understand that God has a purpose for each and every one of our lives. And he's calling us to focus and lock in and secure ourselves in his will and what he has called us to do in that purpose. But a lock works two ways. So that means if we're going to lock into something, that means we need to unlock from certain things that aren't him. What, what am I saying? That means a toxic mentality. That means what you say to yourself, low self-esteem. Maybe you bad with money. Maybe it's your behavior, where your heart is in that purpose. And then God is calling us to focus. You don't know what God is going to do in your life if you lock in. So without further ado, this is the Locked In Podcast. But before we start, bro, make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you share that with 10 people. Then you share that with those 10 people. Those 10 people share with 10 people. Then they share with 10 people. Then they share. I really want you guys to spread the word of God. This is all that we're doing. This is kingdom business. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? As the kingdom of Christ, we got to spread the word. Now, if you really thought we was going to start the episode without praying, just, just, just go ahead and click off, click off, click off, because you really thought you really thought we wasn't going to pray. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time and this opportunity. Lord, we bless this episode. Lord, have your way. Holy Spirit, continue to teach us on the topic of today regarding prayer. God, I pray for this person's week. God, whoever is watching, whatever the circumstance, whatever the situation is, Lord, I pray that they begin to press, God. They continue to press into your word, press into your presence, press into your will, God, as they begin to be blessed, God, throughout the week, as they continue to move on and move forward in whatever it is that they are dealing with, Lord. I pray that people are saved. I pray that people are set free from the bondage in their minds, the bondage regarding their finances, the bondage regarding their families, God. Whatever battle that they are facing, Holy Spirit, I pray that you equip them with the, with the weapons that they need. And that is simply the word of God, Lord, that you help us put on the full armor so we can stand against the enemy, God, who's already a defeated enemy. So we ain't got time for him. But Father God, I pray that we grow in you, grow in, grow in your presence, grow in your knowledge. And God, I pray that we stay locked in and secured in you. In Jesus' mighty master's name, we pray. Amen. Let's go. Hey, I ain't going to waste no time. Today's topic, we are going to be talking about prayer, particularly prayer life. Shout out to Editor Zay. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but prayer life. But I want to ask y'all a question because y'all y'all know I'm going to ask y'all a question. You know, I ain't got these glasses for a reason. I'm going to ask you a question. You feel me? What does it mean to you to pray? What does prayer mean to you? I want you guys to comment down below and ask yourself, what does prayer mean to you? To you, you feel me? And so, as you do that, let's do a social media break. Make sure you guys follow Isaiah Kayembe official, which is my personal IG page, which is my TikTok Isaiah Kayembe. You dig what I'm saying? My Snapchat Isaiah underscore K one on one. But more importantly, make sure you follow the Locked In Podcast IG. You feel me? We hey, we give God glory. We got a hundred and one followers, y'all. Hey, it's crazy. And we have 83 subscribers on YouTube. I am blessed for every single. That means one person is subscribing daily. You guys don't know the little things that that blesses me, that that allows me to know that God is still has his hand on it. And I got to keep going. You feel me? So make sure you follow Locking In Pod, not underscore. I keep saying underscore. Why do I keep saying underscore, bro? Locking In Pod, lowercase. You feel me? Make sure you guys follow. Make sure to DM us any testimonies that you have, any future topics you guys want to talk about. Maybe a Q&A. Any questions that you guys have, we can go ahead and we can talk about the podcast. You feel me? So, after that social media break, let's talk about prayer. So, the Lord has been putting prayer on my heart for about... That's going on for a week now, about a week. And I didn't know why, but you know that feeling when like you be chilling and you feel like something coming, like you just like, hey, I don't know what's going to happen, but God's going to do something. I don't know what's going to happen, but today's going to be a good day or this is going to happen. And that's what the Lord get, he told me. And so when he instructed me on prayer, 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 I was like, okay, Lord, I pray already. I already have a prayer life. He said, no, 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 no. I want you to teach my people how to pray. And I was like, uh, they don't know how to pray already. He said, I want you to teach them how to pray. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I heard you the first time. But then he started telling me why. 
The Lord is calling us as believers. So this is a message to the believers. God is calling us to equip his people. That means to get them ready for what's to come. He's telling us to get ready for the purpose. He's telling us to get ready for whatever relationship. He's telling us to get ready for whatever business proposal. He's telling us to get ready for whatever open door that, that's coming. He's telling you to get ready for whatever closed door. He's telling you to get ready for what the next instruction and command he's going to give you. But in order for us to understand what the next command is, in order for us to hear, we have to pray. And so today's episode, I'm going to talk about prayer, but mainly we're going to talk about three main things. We're going to talk about what is prayer. We're going to talk about when to pray. And then lastly, we're going to talk about why to pray. So the first thing first, what is prayer? Prayer is nothing more than you talking with God. Prayer is a conversation. I'm going to say how my mentors tell me. When I was learning how to understand what prayer truly was and how effective it is, they said, Isaiah, prayer is not just you talking to God. It's God talking to you as well. And I was like, huh. It's because he said prayer is a conversation with God. It is a dialogue, not a monologue. So praying, praying is very essential, especially as a believer, especially as a Christian, because that is how we communicate with God. We first communicate God through his word, obviously, by reading. We spend time knowing what he says, knowing his characteristics, finding out who he is and his principles, and then imparting that in our lives. But most importantly is prayer. Prayer is where we are actually connected and we sit down and we get to talk to the Father. You dig what I'm saying? And the only reason why I'm saying that is because how can I get to know you if I don't have a conversation with you? Because if I can't sit down and hear you, if I can't sit down and uh, understand what's on your mind, what's on your heart, guess what? I'm I'm thinking I'm good over here when you're totally different. And that's how I thought when I was praying at first, because at first my mom, she introduced me, shout out to my mom. She taught me how to pray and she taught my family how to pray, pray your warrior, you feel me? So love you, mom. So basically when I was starting out and learning how to pray, I learned, unfortunately, I don't want to say unfortunately, but you know what I mean? I learned early on um, how to say grace. And the only time I knew how to pray was when you like, you know, you know, have food. You know what I'm talking about? So the famous prayer, God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our foods. And then I found out part two, like the rest of the prayer. I didn't know there was more part of that prayer until I was like 14. Until so some, uh, my homegirl hit me up and she told me, no, you got, I said, you're not finished. By your heads, we are fed. Thank you, Lord, for our daily bread. Amen. You feel me? That nursery rhyme type of prayer. But I didn't know at that young age, I wasn't really talking to God. I, I, I saw prayer as a habit. I saw prayer as just like, oh, okay, just something we do before we eat so we don't choke and die. Simple. <laughs> okay, simple, simple. Lord bless the food. Jesus, let me pray. Amen. Or you pray before you go to sleep, not knowing that God is, we, we're asking the Lord to protect us. And these are things that I didn't know because I thought prayer was just, you know, just a wish list. I treated God in prayer how I would treat Santa Claus, showing them my list, putting it under a tree, hoping he sees everything and hoping that he can go ahead and read every single thing that I want. And I expect it to happen at a certain time. Can I be real with you for a second? Let me lock in. Prayer is not is not your wish list. Prayer is not your Amazon card. Prayer is not your Sheen card. Prayer is not your Timu basket. Prayer is not you demanding things and asking God to do something on a certain deadline because you want him to do it. Hey, say like, 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 chill, chill, chill. I, was just, I, just, I just got off the game. I was just listening to you. Hey, but this is real, fam. We have to lock in into understanding who God is. But first, for, I feel the Holy Ghost. But first, we have to understand prayer is a conversation and we have to respect God's prayer. We have to respect being in a relationship with him. We have to respect talking to him. So that means we can't come to him any type of way. So since prayer is a conversation with God, it's not just you saying, God, I want this. God, I want that. God, I want this. God, I want that. God, I want this. God, I want that. God, I want her. God, I want him. God, I want this. God, I want this car. No, 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 gang. <laughs> That's not what that is. It's having a conversation, letting know, God, how was your day? Lord, what's on your heart? Coming to him. Being a safe place. Because prayer Prayer is literally a safe place. The Bible calls God a refuge. So a refuge is nothing more than just a, a shelter. So when you pray or that conversation with God, 
is the safe place that you need. It's not that FaceTime. It's not that group gossip session. It's not you going to the court and hooping and just talking about everything. It's prayer. It's the safe place. It's where you can be vulnerable. That thing you don't want to show anybody else, but you're willing to show God. Because he can handle it. He can handle it. So that's what prayer is. It's not only us talking to God and letting him know what's on our heart, but it's allowing ourselves to submit ourselves, which means be humble. Not worry about what bills we're going to pay. Not worry about how our credit score is. Not worry about if we got a car or not. Not worry if she's going to text back or not. Not worrying if he's going to call me back or not. Not worried about if I'm, I got enough for this date. Not worrying about if I'm on the schedule. Not worried about any of that, but to know what does God feel. Feel, how does God feel about my life? How does God feel about it? Matter of fact, God, how are you doing? What's on your heart? Lord, what's on your mind? Because I'm talking about me, but I'm not being considerate in the conversation. And I got to lock in. We need to unlock ourselves from being inconsiderate with God. Because could it be possible the reason why your prayers aren't getting answers is because you talk too much and you don't know how to receive? Oh, I'm, uh, uh, yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm, I'm coming down to your business. I'm coming down. Your, I'm, I'm in your business. I'm in your business. Because we got it twisted. It's not about getting what we want. It's the conversation to provide us with what we need. So you may want a spouse, but in prayer, God is telling you, hey, I need you to be holy. And that's why she ain't come. Hey, I need you to forgive. And that's why it's not going to work out. Hey, I need you to better manage your money. I need you to tithe and give your offerings to me because you're, you're spending things and you're wondering where your money is. Hey, I need you. I need you to have self-control because if you go to that party. Hey, I need you to watch your mouth because there are rooms you're about to go into. But you will damage and you will mess up the very room and the opportunity that I've given you only because you lack self-control here. I don't know why I'm here, but we're going to switch. When did we disrespect God in prayer? Why have we allowed ourselves? I'm talking to the believers, y'all. Why have we allowed ourselves to go to God any type of way? What happened to reverence? What happened to deep respect? What happened to understanding? God is our heavenly father. Now, if you don't know, but how I was raised, I can't talk to my mom. I can't talk to my pops any type of way. That's how you get popped. <laughs> and if it's not popped physically, it hurts in here. So lock into going to God in prayer the right way. So that means I'm not just going based on God. I can't believe this happened. God, I can't believe Lord, this, Lord, you. Why did you allow this? Why did you? What did? Uh, 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 uh. You got to be willing to be like you know what, Lord. I had a long day, but God, you're still good. Talk to Him. You know, stranger. And be like, Lord, I had, I had a tough day, but you've been good. Lord, I thank you for allowing me to get to the tough day so I can push forward and so I can move forward. I thank you and I honor you and I praise you. So God, I give you my day. I surrender it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. It's a conversation. Now, Lord, what, what is on your heart? What, what, do, what would you like to show me? What are you trying, what, how are you trying to get, what do you, what do you want my attention for? What, what, what are you trying to show me? What is going on in the season? And then you have to be willing enough to allow him to talk to you and you got to be patient. Now, second, when do you pray? When I first started out praying, because I'm talking about me, you know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't talk about you. I can't even see you. Hey, put the game down, bro. I see you. I'm just playing. <laughs> no, I'm not. Put the game down. You've been on there all day. When I pray, I was challenged to find a time that's not comfortable for me. And I was like, what? Zay, at first I started out praying after Bible study. 
And other times I got up and then I would pray and then I would read my Bible and then I would go on about my day. But that's when I was starting out. But when God called me to go deeper in prayer, deeper into his presence and deeper into um, who he is, that means I had to change. That means I needed to I needed to be disciplined in more areas because I was comfortable. I was comfortable when waking up in the morning saying, God, I thank you for my day. Lord, bless my day. And then I pray. Amen. And I rehearsed it. I got so comfortable with it that I I no longer meant what I said because it, it was something that I just naturally do. Like how you would get up, you take a shower, you get up and brush teeth, you get up and eat eat some uh, breakfast. I just added that to my routine, but I didn't respect it. So then God challenged me and said, hey, I need you to pray at a different time. Pray right here. Well, this is midnight. You be up at midnight. And this is when he talked to me. What's up, Locked In Fam? Hey, just want to stop by and make sure you guys follow my YouTube channel, Isaiah Kayembe Official. This is where I'll be posting all of our Locked In content, all of our episodes. Everything you'll see is on my YouTube page. Make sure you guys like, you comment, share, subscribe. And if you want to know more information, make sure you guys follow me on my personal account on IG, Isaiah Kayembe Official, where I'll be posting clips, snippets, and previews of future episodes. And if you click the description and the link in the bio, Locked In Podcast has an Instagram, you feel me? So make sure you guys like, you comment, you share. And I appreciate every single one of y'all following us on this journey. God is going to do amazing things. Now, let's log back in today's episode. God bless y'all. So I sacrificed my son and you're not willing to sacrifice the game. You're not willing to sacrifice the website. You're not willing to sacrifice talking to the phone, talking to your friends and doing anything. Because you don't want to pray. When you said yes to me, you said yes to sacrificing. So you not sacrificing is you becoming a hypocrite. So are you a hypocrite? Or are you a child? And I was like, okay, okay, okay. Hey, hashtag conviction. So, <laughs> so I get up, I pray at midnight. At first it was a drag. I was like, Bruh, like I'm tired. I'm trying not to fall asleep. But then I kept doing it. Then I made a decision to set an alarm for that time. So I would drop everything. We're 12 p.m. Not 12 p.m. 12 a.m. My fault. 12 a.m. would be that cutoff time. So I'd be like, hey, fellas, I'm getting off the game. I got to go pray. Okay, yeah, go, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Pause right here. Find you some friends and some godly friends who will push you and encourage you to obey God. Who aren't offended when you have to obey God. Anyway, so I go ahead and I pray. And then at that moment, there are, now that I'm growing in my prayer life uh, at 12 a.m., now it's 12 a.m. And I start off praying for 30 minutes. Then that 30 minutes grew into an hour. And then after that hour, I didn't even worry about how long I prayed. I just prayed until he told me to stop. I prayed until he stopped giving me stuff to pray about. And one thing that the Lord revealed to me on when to pray is this. Find you a time that's uncomfortable. That, that's uncomfortable. That's going to require you to sacrifice so you can hear God. You want to know why? Because we live in a world that's too loud right now. Your, your notifications is too loud. Your household is too loud. <laughs> your, what you say in your mind is too loud. What's going on outside is too loud. Your, your school, your business, your relationships, all these different things are, are too loud. And God is calling us to pray. Why? So we can go ahead and find a specific time where we can get away from everything. We can get away from the, tri the, the struggles and trials and tribulations from work and what, what so-and-so did, how we feel about the situation, how I want to be mad at this person, how this person treated me, or I'm tired of work, I don't want to go to work, but I got to. Uh, how we escape from all of that and we find a place of quietness. Could it be very possible? The reason why God is challenging us to pray is because what's going on in your mind and what's going on in your life is too loud. I'm here to tell you that God is louder than your situation, but guess what? Don't allow your situation to overtake you and get lost in the noise when God is calling you. The very peace 
that you will have at work. What happen when you pray? The, the, the good, the joy you will have in your day. Whenever you're going to deal with customers, whenever you're going to deal with people, you're going to deal with classmates that are going to get on your nerves or anything that will bring you peace is prayer. Take that time to go out and pray. Find you a time that's uncomfortable. If, it, if it's for you, starting out, do 6 a.m. For people who go to school, you don't go to school until 7. You get up. While you're getting up and getting dressed, pray at 6 o'clock in the morning. For my night owls, take that hour away from the game and pray. Take those 15 minutes and pray. Take those 30 minutes and pray. And get in God's presence. Not just so you can say anything, but just so you can encounter the peace. There's a peace that happens when, God, when you pray. There's a peace that happens whenever you continue to walk in what God has told you to do. You dig what I'm saying? There's peace. So for, 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 my, for my freshmen in the faith, which is my new believers, trying to figure out what time to pray, find a time that's uncomfortable and stick to it. 2024 get you an alarm get you some accountability get you some prayer partners be like hey bro remember you gotta go pray i, I pray this morning i got homies to this day they hit me up and be like hey i said hey bro i gotta pray <clears throat> you late i pray this morning not as competition but as encouragement to be like hey i prayed did you pray today go ahead because a great example when that happened is jesus Jesus, whenever Jesus was with his disciples, Jesus even took time to step away from everything, to step away from the disciples, step away from people in the crowd and everything, step away to go quietly in prayer. Scholars believe that it was at, it was in midnight, close to even 3 a.m. If you even want, let's talk Bible, because we're going to lock in, we're going to lock in the reading our word. Simple. The night before Jesus was going to get crucified, which means killed for my hoofo, he was going to get killed and be put on the cross and die for all of our sins. He called three disciples to come and pray with him. Three. Those three, this is Zay way, Zay version. Those three, they kept falling asleep. You know what I'm saying? They spent too much time. They spent too much time FaceTiming. They spent too much time talking. They spent too much time doing something or whatnot. That's not true. This just is a edition. It's just so I can make sure you understand the Bible. You feel me? Go read the Bible. It's, it, it does wonders. It really does. So they kept falling asleep. And Jesus Jesus went ahead and he just prayed. Since they're going to fall asleep, I'm going to just pray. And then the fact that Jesus was able. This is Jesus we're talking about. Walking on water, Jesus. Turn water into wine. You feel me? Like nails, like holes in his hands, Jesus, like hole in his side. This is the Jesus we're talking about who went to hell, got the keys back, priest in hell, you know, died, died. And three days he rose up from the grave and he's now alive in, at the right hand of God in heaven. And he's now alive inside of you. If you accept him to be uh, Lord and Savior, this is Jesus we're talking about. He prayed. Now, when I was first in Jesus, I was like, Jesus don't need to pray. He's the son of God. Like, you got, what do you need to pray for? Because when Jesus, when Jesus came, when, when God created Jesus and he became down as Jesus and became man, he then learned how to surrender. He taught us humility. He taught us how to go to the father. God is so dope that he came down as human, as flesh, y'all. Just to encourage us and teach us how to seek God. <laughs> it's crazy how God used a part of himself to teach us how to get to him. He took time, y'all. So take time and find a time to pray. Have a conversation with God. Now, lastly is why we pray. And I'll say, I hear you. I understand. I know prayer is a conversation with God. You said I got to respect him, so I can't talk to him crazy. So, I mean, I can't cuss or nothing. I can't do none of that stuff. I can't, I can't, mm -mm. I can't just go on about how, how my days, how my days, and I don't understand what, what he's talking about. Okay, bet. You said find the time. I'm going to find me a good time. But I say, why do we pray? Why do we pray? Why do you pray? I am so glad you asked. The reason why I pray, because I'm going to talk about me. The reason why I pray 
is because I pray so I get to know the Lord. I pray so I can I get to grow in my relationship with God. I pray so I can hear God's heart and not worship his hand. Say, what does that mean? There's there's a time in our lives, and sometimes I was so used to God's hand over my life. I was used to God doing something, whether it it's something miraculous, like, Lord, I ain't got no money, and then God, God bless me financially. Or like, I say, I ain't got no food. And I, I literally told the Lord, I said, Lord, I am hungry. True story. You can, hey, this was back in 2021. Yeah, 2021. Got off work, had no bread. My family had no bread. And then I was like, look, I don't know how we're going to eat, but I said, Lord, I am hungry. I come home from work. And after me saying, Lord, I am hungry, an hour later, my mom, who says she had no money for groceries, has literally a month full of groceries. And she had chicken. Because I prayed for chicken specifically. And I said, whoa. Whoa. And y'all probably like, bro, really? But that does something to me because he listens and it's the little things. Because I know if he's faithful in the little things, then he's faithful in the big things. The big things aren't just talking about cars or anything. I pray because I seek God's peace. Whenever I'm about to have a long day, whenever I have a whole bunch of stuff to do, I make sure I spend time with God and just to know how he's feeling. As well as letting letting what I've been holding, carrying and giving it to him because he can handle it. There's nothing new under underneath God. God ain't God. God is not like, you know, worried or he's not shocked by what you have to say. He already knows. He knows what you're dealing with. Another thing, just because God knows doesn't mean he doesn't still want to hear from you. He revealed to me two years ago, he said, Isaiah, a lot of people are going through things. Like any father would be concerned with their son if they're getting bullied. You come home, you're battered, you're bruised, you got a black eye. And even if I know you're getting bullied, I still want to hear you. You want to know why? Because I care. But God already knows. God already knows. I ain't got to pray. I ain't got to pray. Just because he knows doesn't mean he doesn't want to hear you. Just because you know doesn't mean he, 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 he doesn't want to get closer to you. Draw you need to him. That's only because we, we get comfortable with saying, well, God already knows. So there's no point in me. No, he cares. That's why he's asking. And that's why. I pray because it reminds me that God cares about me. And it's not just me, him caring about me, but it's, it's, it's me caring about him. Me hearing his heart. Me going to him and saying, hey, Lord, how was your day? Even though you don't operate in time. What's on your heart, Lord? How are you feeling? Have I done anything that, that made you upset? Have I done anything that you didn't like? How do you feel about the situation, God? And how I'm talking, this is how I'm talking to him. And in time, he would be he began to be like, Zay, I wasn't happy with your attitude last night regarding your parents. I, was, I wasn't happy with your attitude regarding your friends. I wasn't happy that you put the game over me. I'm not happy with so and so. And I'm like, okay, you know, okay, my fault, my fault, my fault. But that's why. The reason why you should pray, the reason why anyone should pray is simply this, to get closer with God. If you don't hear anything, I say, you say, why do we pray? So you can get closer to God. The Bible says, God will draw near to you if you draw near to him. So for anyone, I feel the God. Oh yes, I feel the Holy Spirit. For anyone who's feeling distant and for anyone who feels like God is not hearing you or feel like God is not here or he's, he's too far, draw near to him so he can draw near to you. That's all I got for y'all today. Hey, this has been the Locked In Podcast. I hope you guys know that when you lock in with Christ, he can unlock the new you. If you want to be locked in with Christ and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Repeat this prayer after me and say, Father God, I give you my life. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. 
The Bible says, if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord, that Jesus is my Savior, and I believe in my heart that Jesus is my Lord, that Jesus is my Savior, that he has died for me, he has died for all of my sins, and he is he is rose in three days, and he is now alive in me. He's now alive in heaven at the right side of you, God. And today I am forever yours. I am forever saved. I am forever set free from sin. And I am saved from now on, forevermore, forevermore, forevermore. I believe today, this day, I am saved. I am locked in with you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty master's name we pray. Amen. If you just pray that prayer, welcome to the Locked In family, which is nothing more than just the body of Christ. Before I go into it, make sure you guys you like, make sure you guys you comment, make sure you guys subscribe, and make sure you guys share this episode with people. We have to grow and we have to spread God's word, but I cannot do it by myself. We need each other, y'all. I need you. <clears throat> you never know who. Who God is going to use to reach you or you, you who, how God is going to do just to get your attention. Maybe you sharing that message would draw someone near to God. But I challenge you this week. I challenge you today and whatever time zone, wherever you are from, lock into prayer. Lock into having a prayer life. Now. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. I know I already said that already. Make sure you guys follow again. Locking in pod. Not underscore. I keep saying underscore. Locking in pod. All lowercase. Make sure you follow my social media. Isaiah Kayembe official. Y'all, we are going up. God is going to do a wonderful thing. And you guys don't want to miss the next episode. And next episode, we're going to talk about how to pray. All right. So that's all I got for y'all. Y'all take care. God bless. And remember, lock in with Christ so you can lock into you. Peace. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The reason, the reason why I'm talking about that is because some of you guys refuse to go to the valley. Oh, they quiet. We as the body of Christ have refused to go through the valley. We don't want to go through the financial struggle. We don't want to go through the divorce. Uh Uh-oh, I'm here now. We don't want to deal with disobedient children. We don't want to deal with workers who get on our nerves. We don't want to wait for what God has promised us years ago. We don't want to wait, Lord. We don't. I want my blessing now. Because I want my blessing now, I'm not walking through no valley with no shadow of death. You're giving me death when you're the God who gives us life. Why am I walking through this valley? And that's what some of you, in the name of, that's what some of you guys sound like in your prayer time.